Today, let's figure out how to put a newer style GE washing machine into diagnostics to check error codes. Your machine may look slightly different than this one, but as long as it has the same small circular lights, this code's going to work, and it also should work if it has an egg if it has an 8 segment display too, although the codes will look different for sure. To start, make sure the machine has been freshly plugged in, and to do this, unplug the machine for maybe 30 seconds, and then plug it back in, then wait for about 15 to 30 seconds to make sure that the system has booted up properly. Once this is done, let's go ahead and start with this code. First, press and hold the start button on the washing machine, and once this is done, turn the main dial counterclockwise or to the left seven times. Once you've done this, release the start button and it will chime to alert you that you've now entered the diagnostic system. Now you are in the diagnostic system, which will let you check error codes on this GE washer, as well as do a ton of parts testing too. Rotating the knob clockwise will increase the number count to the next test or feature, while rotating it counterclockwise will decrease the number count to the previous thing. The first test available is the fault code mode. Once the spin light or the number one of the egg segment display is on, you can press the start button to find any fault codes on your washing machine. Once pressed, the first fault code will be displayed through the blinking lights. To go on to the next fault code, if any are in the system, you'll need to press the start button. If you press the start button and no other fault codes come on the system and all the status lights flash on and off at the same time, that means then that there are no extra codes. Now, if you want to go back through the codes again, simply press the start button and it will revert to the first fault code stored. If you decide to rotate the knob, it will kick the system back to diagnostic mode and then advance the selection forward or backwards, depending on which way you go. If you want to exit entirely out of the diagnostic mode, simply press and hold the start button for 3 seconds and the diagnostic system will then shut itself down. Let's now go over the GE fault code list. These are the 32 current fault codes on a GE top load washer, but it is possible that more could be added after I film this video or even slightly different from the washer I worked with, but each circle filled in black means that the light is lit on the washer, but they aren't black, they're green, so let's fix that real quick. The lit circles correspond to the fault code number on the 8 segment display, although I guess it's really a 7 segment display according to GE. You'll remember that in this video when I checked the codes, my washer had the third light illuminated, which means that it would be fault code number 4. Make sure you write down the fault codes because we're going to now go over them and what these numbers correspond to with your washer either not working or having an issue. Here are the faults relating to all 32 codes on this type of GE washer. As we just saw earlier, the lights displayed equal a number but if you have the LCD display, the actual number. We're scrolling through each of these numbers at a steady pace, so please stop the video when you find the code that you need to understand. In the case of the washer that we had in the video, the code number was 4, which is just on our screen, so it's pretty easy to figure out what we need to check. Please understand that you will need to do the research on your own how to solve the issue with the fault, because this video is for showing you how to figure out what the code is, but not how to fix it. Once we get done scrolling though through these 32 codes, we're going to show you how to do some parts testing that may help you figure out what is broken inside the diagnostic system. To get back into the diagnostic system and out of the fault code mode, simply turn the dial once and it will move to the next selection in the system. Now we are going to go through some of the modes and tests you can select from the diagnostic menu. To start any test, press start and follow the instructions on the screen that we show. To advance to the next test, simply rotate the knob clockwise, or to revert to the last test, rotate the knob counterclockwise. There are a total of 18 tests or modes that you can select on this style washing machine. The first five are options for the control of the machine, and the rest are generally components that can just be tested. These individual tests can help verify if a component can actually work when tested, or if there's a malfunction of that part. These tests aren't to show you how to fix the part necessarily, but simply test it and see if the component is faulty or if there's an error within the cycle that the component is utilized in. Remember to stop the video at any point to read the test, as each of these tests run differently like the drain pump or lid lock tests. Unlike the Whirlpool style tests, this machine will automatically lock the lid to run the spin and agitation modes as part of the tests, so if the lid lock is bad, the machine will not properly agitate or spin either. 
I tried pressing the start button to turn off the lid lock, but unlike again the Whirlpool tests, which I am really used to, simply advancing the knob will end any given test. Once you get through all these tests in the system, all the lights will flash on and off, signaling that you are back at number zero and you can cycle through again if you need to. With all of these tests cycled through, you can continue to select more tests as needed, but if you want to finish all the testing and just return the unit back to its normal mode of operation, simply press and hold the start button for approximately 3 to 5 seconds and the green lights will turn off, rendering the unit able to select the complete cycles again. And now you know how to get into the error codes, find out what they are, and a few tests that you can do with a new style GE washing machine. I appreciate you watching this video, and if you have any other questions or comments, make sure to post. I did shoot one other video with this particular machine regarding the agitator, so if you need to deal with that, make sure to watch that video, and thanks for watching.